Yo, what's going on everyone? In this video, I'm going to be showcasing the updates that just dropped from my asset, the dialogue component. First is the main update, which is the condition system. This added dropdown now lets the system check if the condition is met by the player, along with a pass or fail outcome. All you have to do to get it to work is click the plus icon and add a name and amount. This is done in your NPC's dialogue component. Then in your player dialogue component player conditions variable you want to add the exact same condition name and value. Inputting values here means that your player starts with these conditions and values at begin play. You do not need to add all the conditions that you want to include down the line. So you can leave this blank and if you were to run the dialogue it would automatically fail. If you added it at the beginning you then need to ensure that you have equal or greater amounts to pass. What if you want to add a condition down the line. I got you. The asset includes a BP scroll blueprint that acts as a pickup and will increase the player's scroll condition by the value of 1. If the player doesn't have a scroll category, it will add one and then add the amount to 0. So if you want your own condition here, you could replace this with another item, number, and when you check for it in the NPC's dialogue component, the player will pass. One thing, you need to check change branch if you are going to use conditions. There's a little error handling trick that you can do to know if it's working. When starting off with this asset, I recommend adding in a error branch. Then you can use it to direct all default branches to go there if your pass or fail branches end up not being picked up. This will let you know that you didn't check the box. I also added a debugger for this, so when you're initially copying the blue nodes here into your character blueprint, you can also copy this purple one which will display what keys and values your player has for the conditions. Here you can see that when we start, the player only has 10 gold. We can change this to a drink, food, whatever, and we'll see that it works as well whenever we press the T key. In the demo, you can see how I've used the conditions for a regular quest and a shop system. I think that's everything. If if I remember everything else, I'll address it in the Discord. Next part of the update are the icon decorators. I haven't made a video covering the rich text, so I'll just cover both right now. In the dialogue, be it NPC names, dialogue, player choices, if you add these less than and greater than symbols, then the text in between gets changed to the respective color. Currently, I have it set up to use two letters following the format of IR for italics red, etc. I could have spelt it out, but then you're having to remember everything and type it all out. I found this easier, but if enough people want to change, just let me know. So the update includes rich icons, which work the same way as the text, but have a slightly different format. You start these with a less than IMG ID equals quotes, the name of the data table, quotes, forward slash, greater than symbol, and the image is going to populate. Yeah, I know, spooky HTML stuff. You'll get the hang of it after doing it about five times. The format for this has each of the image names using five characters. I definitely needed a few more than the rich text to be able to differentiate each one from the other. That's why you'll see some have three letters like map and it'll have two underscores after it. So it fills up to the five character requirement. I have them all set up already. You're more than welcome to adjust them or add more. To do that, open up the rich data table and either add or duplicate. All the default icons I'm using are a thousand by a thousand pixels, but I think it'll make any size fit. All you gotta do is add the line, add a five character name, icon, and you're good to use it. The last thing are minor changes. I updated the NPC dialog box to a scroll box, so you can now have it go super long. Oh, and I got it so that the mouse wheel will roll if you hover over the entire text box and scroll. Don't even get me started on how tedious this was to figure out. Well, I guess I didn't even add scroll functionality for the controller or keyboard. I will add it to the list. Oh, and I can't believe I even forgot about this. I added customizable UI settings. I didn't get too much into it because I don't have all the time in the world, so I'll be adding more to it eventually. Essentially, you will enter whatever name from these dropdowns into your UI style variable, and it'll just start using it. By default, it's, well, I mean, yeah, you guessed it, default. You can open it or any of the other ones up and start customizing your heart away. The text box dimensions are 520 by 100 115 pixels, 
So if you want to go make your own, uh, yeah, you're welcome. I only got so far as adding customizable settings for the NPC dialog box and the continue button, not the choice buttons yet, but all the choice buttons follow the same format, so you can kind of like just edit it yourself. I'm just kidding, but really you can tweak it here and eventually I'll add another fancy drop down. Uh, but yeah, that's it I think for reels, mainly just conditions, UI, decorators, and a few more animations. More updates will follow down the line. I hope you find this helpful. I will see you in the next video. Bye.